Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Chabrins RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Heartland Torque 371 Toy Hauler 5th Wheel. You guys picked a beautiful unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, try to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. Leave room for your awning on your campsite. On your off campsite, of course, leave room for your slides. But then I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be so you leave yourself a nice walking path because your power is going to plug in all the way at the rear of the unit on your driver's side of your tow vehicle and your water is going to hook up at the front of your tow vehicle so park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite I do recommend off the bat with a unit this long you're going to want to park for power um so get yourself a nice long water hose once we arrive we're gonna unhook our hitch hitch man will go that with you but i'll show you how this auto leveling system works hold in both them arrows that's gonna turn on your light we're gonna hit hitch height we're gonna bring the front up or the front down get off our hitch once our hitch is clear pull the truck completely out of uh, the way Lift up the front so that it is higher than the back. Once it is, you're simply going to touch auto level. Once you do, this whole unit's going to dance around for a little bit. It's going to bring down all of your auto leveling. You got two here in the front and two in the back. Your landing legs will move a little bit. Once it's done leveling, you're going to hear this beep and that light's going to stay solid. Once our unit's level and stable, next thing we're going to do is hook up our power and water. Again, you got this 30 foot 50 amp hose on the back here. At the end of that 50, should you need to in your convenience pack, will be this 50 to 30 dog bone. And if you need to plug in at home, take that 30 amp, put it on here and plug in at home. Just run appliances accordingly, ACs, etc. You don't want to pop breakers because you're running off 110. Once we got our power hooked up, Let's hook up our water. That's front of your unit right here. These are your water connections. Now, for camping sites, we're gonna use City Water Connect. Turn that arrow to City Water Fixtures. Open up your inlet. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in the unit. Always use this when putting fluid in here. Hook that up. Hook up your hose, make sure this is on city, but don't turn it on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. On your unit, your hot water heater is just to the right of your entry doorway. All we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plug's back on. Get that cap back on there nice and snug. Once it's on there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. And now that we've got um, our unit level and stable, you can go inside and deploy the slides if you need. What I need you to do is get inside and open up your water taps. Open up the water taps so you got a nice steady flow of water going through them. Once you got water going through them, you know your hot water heater is full and you can turn that on from indoors. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're going out dry camping somewhere, boondocking. In that case, we're gonna wanna fill up our fresh water connection, potable water. We're gonna fill it in the same spot, but we're gonna start by turning this all the way over to tank fill. This is gonna bring 
from our hose to our tanks. Treat your hot water heater the same way. Fill this up. Two ways to tell when it's full. There's an overflow vent right here or on the inside where you check the levels of your battery. In black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Once that fresh water is full, remove your hose, then turn this to dry camping. Once you have that in dry camping, when you want to utilize that water, turn on your water pump from indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water that's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp with power and water. Let me walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit. Starting here with your pass-through storage area. You have your propane here. Up here you have your lipper control. One control. So once the system goes on, you see that you can go through and do your auto leveling from here as well. Function aborted, you can hit auto level or your hitch height. Again, all of our water connections. You have an outdoor shower right here. Hose that'll pull out. Clip it, clips that in there like that. Black tank flush. You have two, two black and gray tanks on this. One here and one in the back. I'll show you where those dump. After we dump those, we'll utilize our black tank flush. Here's a flue for your furnace. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It will get hot and make sure nothing's ever blocking it. Cable, satellite, 110. Again, just dump, first dump up front. This access to the back of your fridge. Coming down this side, gray tank number two and waste tank number two from your back toilet and your garage. And black tank flush for that. Your fueling station. Here's where you turn that on and off at. It's a vent you can push out from indoors. Get the gas fumes out. We'll go over your ramp and fuel when we get back to your garage. Come around to your campsite, another vent. Big awning will run out here shortly. So I can get this open with one hand. A lot of times you need both to open, but no, nope, it'll open. It'll hold on that magnet up there. Outdoor kitchen. Pull this forward. And lock these in back here. Lighting from in here. You also have a grill out here with your light with a matchstick. This will pop on here for a sink. And snap these to push these back. Make sure you keep this area locked out here because of your TV. Underneath this grill area, you do have another quick connect LP right here. Some storage. A couple outdoor speakers. Here's a hole for a manual uh, override for your power so it slides. This so way you can manually crank it open if you lose power. Again, your hot water heater. Our low point drains. Drain those when leaving the campsite. <coughs> Other side of your pass through storage. Here's where you'll bypass your hot water heater. There's your manual hand crank. Up here is your battery disconnect. That'll disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That'll come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. And you prep for a TV out here if you want to put a TV cable to 110. Your other propane over here. And your regulator back there. To prep for solar, you can plug in a solar panel right here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. And lastly up front here, here's your generator which I'll start up for you shortly and your batteries. Check your battery post every now and then. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look inside your unit. Okay, so now inside your unit, the first thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. 
as you come in got this big long panel here let's open this up to this control box starting at the top this is for wine guard connect if you have a wine guard subscription this is your power control this shows you that you're on 30 amp service right now down here is your generator let's go ahead and start that up just that easy let's go hear that purring for you There's your Onan 5500 Cummings very nicely. Now they say it's not good to turn a generator on and then right back off, so I'm gonna let that run for about a minute while I go over a couple other things. On this control panel here is where you'll see your brand new battery. There's your fresh water button. I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Black and gray tanks. Down here, where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Your water heater hooked up to gas, your water heater hooked up to electric. It does make a difference. All of these are for lighting. Down here are slide controls. You shut your generator off. Slide controls and your awning. That is your awning light I just turned on. You see that in the sun? Let's run your awning out. So the thing I need to point out to you on your awning is that no one has designed one to stop at the right point yet so when you run your awning out you're going to want to watch for your flap to fall down once your flap falls down and you can see your metal bar that's as far as you want to come out oh right there that will continue to roll itself up and roll itself up backwards if you let it so keep an eye on your finger as you run that out standing here at the doorway make sure you don't run it out too far Turn that back in here real quick. And with it on and in, we'll continue walking around the unit. So down below all this is your JBL sound system. Crank that up. Three zones on that, indoors, outdoors, both. AM, FM, Bluetooth. Uh, right here you can go through different things, your USB, auxiliary, optical, HDMI. You can run your TV sound through this. All from that TV right there. Coming down below that is your access panel to your breaker box. And Fuses. Ton of 15s in there, a 20, a 3, a couple of 20s. Highly recommend you have a handful of those with you when you go camping. Push that up in the top and snap in. Yeah, when I got two hands. Coming into your living room here, you have the parachute pull recliners. Switch this out here, pull up on it like a parachute. Right in here. TV here. Got your remotes over here. Crank that up. This is also a remote for your sound system. Up is nailed, all the contestants are gonna do construction. There's TV. Get that off. Remotes will be in your drawer. Excuse me, bottom drawer down here with all of your Flagstaff stuff. Self-explanatory microwave with a high and low exhaust. You also have a light over your cooktop. This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. You'll see when you go to light, it turns to red. Hit your spark when your gas is turned on, you'll light up there. Same thing on your oven. Turn that to that flame, hit your spark here, that'll turn it on, no need for a pilot light, and then just set it to the desired temperature. To rock your panel light down, that becomes an oven light. Couple of one tenths here, up top. You're gonna open up your fan vent, 
and turn your fan on. Dramatic fridge. Controls for that, we'll open up our freezer. I can get, I got to push on these the right way. There it goes. Up top, turn it on, you'll see it on over here. So we're gonna turn that to auto. Auto means when you run plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Switch that auto to just gas. If light flashes on there, that means your gas is low. And over here, you can change your temperature. One through five, five being the coldest. Go back to your garage in a moment. Continue here in the living room. Head up into the hallway to your thermostat. Let's turn the air on in here. There's your AC. And you notice when I shut the AC off, AC shuts off rather quickly. Now I crank your heat up. You heard the heat kick on furnace shut that off it takes a few minutes for the furnace fan to cycle through before that shuts off coming into your bathroom here just want to make sure you got 110 with gfci reset in here light in here bathroom door make sure that that is snapped open between your bathroom and your bedroom for travel in your bedroom here got lighting and of course your adjustable bed on your adjustable bed you want it all the way up into the reclined position before bringing in your wardrobe slide another thing about this wardrobe slide this door these magnets right here those need to connect this door has to be open in order for this wardrobe slide to work properly Covers everything up here. You do have your separate thermostat for this AC. Put that one off. Turn the thermostat on up here. It's much warmer than 66 in here. Come on. Front one shut off now. And there's your back one. I'm going to shut that off. I am looking for a carbon monoxide propane detector. There it is. So back in this corner of your kitchen is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mention that's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking, and you're going to be gone for the day, use that battery disconnect up front to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. All right, let's check out your garage. All right, coming in your garage section here. Show a few things back here. Immediately to my left, you are prepped for a washer and dryer. 110 down there. Another 110 here. Another 110 here. All prepped for a TV. Um, there's a backer in there, cable for that. Now you can take this whole area here, your little bathroom, and lock that back and give you a bigger storage area. Or you can bring this around, unhook it here, bring this around, hook it in here. Gives you a bigger bathroom. You have a table that'll set in between your chairs and everything here. Get to that in a moment. Around the corner, lift up and pull out your stairs. For upstairs here. You have a hand crank open power exhaust up here for the bunk, so it doesn't get too hot. Shades, um, your exhaust vents. Except for those, you'll simply 
push them out and then we'll air this out in here. Up underneath here are a bunch of controls. You have another 110 here. These are all lighting. This is your rear awning. We'll run that out when we get your deck out. Right now, I'm gonna bring your bunk down. Bunk control, we're gonna put down. So you'll notice at a certain point, your top bunk is gonna stop. And then that will bring down your seating. You can bring these all the way down. I just want to bring it down far enough to roll, show you how to roll this forward. Just roll that back. Underneath these, a couple bars to pull down for extra support. If you're using these for a bed, laid down like that. As you see on the bottom of these, you also have another leg that you can lay down. So that's how that seating will go. Now, if you look up here, there's two holes. This bottom hole on all four sides will hold your top bunk up with cotter pins. Let's run that back up. Once you get, get it all the way back up, get these cotter pins in through here, just like so, on all four corners. Then you bring your top bunk down, or bring your bunk down, just the bottom will come. Cotter pins will hold that top up there for you. Bring that back up. And let's go outside and set your deck up. So you'll have padlocks on these, I'm assuming. Is this spring adjusted so one person can do this? I just grab the handle, walk it down with my hand. There's your platform. Trying to make this a ramp, of course. Remove these cotter pins. Bring your decking out. Make sure all our Velcro's unhooked. First set, we'll swing out to the side here. Set that like that for now. Swing our second set out. And I'll show you the trick to get these to go in here. What you want to do is have this bent part move inwards. That way that'll go there. And then when you pop it out, it snaps in there. Front, snaps in like so. Same thing on this corner. Bring this piece up, bend that back, tuck it in like so. Straighten your wall out and that locks that in there. Just that quickly, you got your deck. Now let's go in there and run your awning out. So back in the garage here, we'll just hit out. And you see your awning folding out out there. And there's your awning out here. Come back in, run that back in. Go along and fold right back in for you. You also have a cross breeze screen. Let that finish running itself back in. You also have this screen that you can bring down to screen everything off. Gotta bring these in. 
keep a step on that. That's gonna release that lock. Over here, pull this side in and that releases it. Same thing over here. But you've gotta turn there, pull on that and that'll release. And fold this over in half. Rock that up in there. Fold this one down deep. Put that up in here. Then we're going to attach all our Velcro here to hold everything in place. All right, now closing the ramp back up. Simply going to lift. Your biggest concern is watching these cables. Make sure these cables get tucked in. Over here. These cables, tuck them in. Hard to do one-handed here. One moment. Okay, so now we're going to close the unit up. I like to come to my control panel, shut off all my interior lighting. Then I can look around the unit and see if I've left any interior lighting on. No more. Doors and drawers. Close all doors and drawers. Do you have more lights back here to shut off? underneath here make sure all doors and drawers are closed all of our lights are off nothing's going to impede our slides from coming in we're going to hit in on this one maybe close this door a little bit Make sure your cabinet doors up there are closed. This could catch on it. It's okay to hear that noise. That's just a slide mechanism telling itself not to come in any further. Now our bedroom one's coming in. Wardrobe slide. We're in, lights off, exit our unit. Now, the biggest thing on these steps is you want to make sure this exterior door is open as far as it can so this doesn't catch. You see as you lift, it actually cuts pretty close here. Set it up inside, lock your door in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door, lift and turn your handle. At this point, we're gonna unhook our power, our water, and our cable. And bring up these rear steps, fold these in twice, and then the whole thing just sets in there. Get up underneath here and dump your low point drains. Once them are done, come to your hot water heater. You're gonna lift up on this pressure release valve. That's gonna dump the remainder of your hot water out. Push that back down, otherwise your door won't close. And then pull your drain plug. We're gonna come up front, we're gonna turn this back on again, and we're gonna hit retract all. That's gonna bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Once we do, we'll use our hitch height to hook up our hitch and head on up to the dump station. Again, two places to dump here. Front and rear, we do have bigger, longer, stronger hoses where you can build a Y. But whatever you, however you hook this up, you're gonna do one at a time. So starting here in the front, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna pull the white handle to the right, excuse me, the white X to the right. That's gonna be your black tank. Once it sounds like that black tank's no longer draining, leave that black handle open. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook up the hose at the dump station and turn this on. That's gonna wash out your black tank. Close that, unhook your hose, close that, make sure that's done draining. Close your black handle, pull your gray handle. The handle to your left. Once that's done, that's gonna be clean the water. It's your sinks, your showers. That'll clean your hose out a little bit. You can bring that hose and hook it up back here. And back here, we're gonna pull our bottom handle first. 
waist holding. Once that one's done, again, leave the handle open. Hook up your hose for a good five minutes. Wash that black tank out. Get done, unhook your water. Make sure it's done draining. Close your black tank, pull your gray handle again. Again, that'll be cleaner water as your sinks and your showers. And that'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Then you can store it in a nice sanitary place and head on home. Thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this torque for many years to come. Happy camping.